Hi folks, here's a quick introduction to IPAC and the kinds of archives we have here. I've had a couple conversations with some of you recently in which you expressed surprise that there were some archives that you know and love that are actually part of IPAC, so I thought a quick introduction might be worth it. Why should you care, aside from the huge amounts of data we have here? Well, the I in NITARP stands for IPAC, the Infrared Processing and Analysis Center based here at Caltech. We're also kind of part of JPL, but we're physically based at Caltech. We are definitely not the Caltech Astronomy Department. We are a separate entity. IPAC has many different archives. Each has their own goals, their own charter, their own methodology, their own tools, their way of handling the data. And they, a lot of times they have their own staff as well. They're serving a very specific portion of the professional astronomy community. When you were participating in NITARP or its predecessor, you learned a lot about at least one of our data sets, but it turns out we have an awful lot more data that might be of interest to you. IPAC has recently been working really hard to have more name brand recognition in the astronomy community because we serve a lot of archives that, just like in your community, people don't always realize that IPAC houses these archives. There are archives that are based at other places too that have different charters. One of the big archives here at IPAC is NED. NED is the NASA IPAC Extragalactic Database. It is specifically focused on extragalactic science. It ingests huge catalogs, but also huge tables from the literature. It has more than 470 million objects as I speak. There are many different crosslinks and notes about objects, and they do updates every few months. So by the time you're listening to this, they may have even more than 470 million objects in their database. Their website is given there, and it looks kind of like this. You can search by name or by position in a variety of different ways. Another big archive here at IPAC is the NASA Exoplanet Archive. It is specifically focused on stars that either are known to harbor exoplanets or are thought to harbor exoplanets. It includes Kepler data and it's the portal for US-based investigators using Corot data. Corot is a European mission. There are lots of online tools that they have to work with those data, but also data you can upload. So the periodogram service, you can upload your own data or use the data that housed at the Exoplanet Archive. The website is given there and it looks something like this. You can search straight away from the front page, or you can investigate some of the tools and specific subcategories of data that they have. URSA is another big archive here at IPAC. URSA is the Infrared Science Archive. Its goal is to specifically provide an interface to all NASA infrared and submillimeter data sets. We have a few other data sets in there too, but it's primarily NASA infrared and submillimeter data. Some are very small, like some of the Spitzer Legacy programs, but some are very large, just the all sky surveys likewise. URSA data sets are cited in about 10% of all astronomical refereed journal articles, so chances are excellent that at any given time, someone somewhere is using URSA data. There are 97 terabytes of image data consisting of 18 million individual images. There are 72 billion sources and catalogs and 157,000 spectra. Here are just some of URSA's holdings. The Infrared Astronomy Satellite, or IRAS, was the first all-sky mid and far infrared survey, and it was the reason IPAC was chartered in the 80s. You might have also used the 2 micron all-sky survey. This is an all-sky survey at JH and K, which is near infrared. Spitzer's archive is also held at URSA. Those are pointed observations between 3 and 160 microns. I'll talk more about that in a minute. WISE is the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, did an all-sky survey between 3 and 23 microns. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Planck is an ESA mission. It has an all-sky survey between 30 and 857 gigahertz. There's also data from BLAST, which is submillimeter. There's data from COSMOS, which is a multi-wavelength survey of an extragalactic field. There's BOLOCAM data, which is a millimeter telescope. Akari was a Japanese infrared telescope that surveyed the whole sky. MSX was a mid-infrared telescope from the US Air Force that mapped the galactic planes and specifically tried to cover the gaps in the IRAS all-sky coverage. ISO is the Infrared Space Observatory, and URSA was the US interface to the ESA archive for ISO. Spitzer. Spitzer is both an active mission and no longer an active mission, because when it ran out of cryo, that phase ended, and then we entered the warm mission. So its entire archive from both the cryo era and the warm mission era are both available through URSA. Spitzer's data come from the Spitzer Heritage Archive. The SHA was the testbed for a completely new look and feel for a whole bunch of URSA's tools, and you can see this interface and this look and feel propagating through the rest of URSA's holdings. What does it look like? Like this. This is the Spitzer Heritage Archive. The first page you come to is a position search, which is what most people are doing. There's other options on the left and on the bottom that where you can control exactly what kind of search you're doing. 
WISE is the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, and it is also, like Spitzer, both active and no longer active because it was on initially for 13 months, then turned off, and then reawakened last fall. Its entire archive is also available through IRSA. The WISE data, both the images and the catalogs, are available most easily from something called the WISE image server, which looks like this. It looks awful lot like the Spitzer Heritage Archive, right? That's the idea. Once you've mastered one of these archive interfaces, the rest should be easy to pick up. This is another position search with different options on the left and very specific things that you can toggle on the bottom. This is the Planck archive. Similarly, it looks, it has the same basic look and feel. Finder Chart is a tool at URSA that's incredibly useful. You can use it to search images and catalogs all at once from the DSS, the Sloan survey, 2MASS, WISE, and IRES. It is very powerful. The kinds of results it gives you it looks something like this if you choose the PDF output. You have the same patch of sky in many different wavelengths. So in summary, there's lots of data available to you right now. Everything is on the web. Most of the interfaces are intuitive. At least I really hope they're intuitive because I've been working on them to make them intuitive. Most have online help. Again, I wrote that. So if it doesn't make sense, please let me know. All of these services are getting more and more integrated all the time. Many, it turns out, already have some related material that's already on the NYSHARP wiki or in NYSHARP tutorials, both past and planned. All of these archives have a representation at the AAS and in other professional astronomy venues. So please don't be afraid to branch out and go exploring and see what kind of data you can find.